my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome on the special news channel. Um, primarily in <laughs> epilepsy and autism, but there are some other stuff I talked about as well. Today we are going to talk about Judge, Judge Rottenberg Center, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a place that now dis um, people of all different other disabilities go to to basically be tortured. Um, it was primarily for autistic individuals and some people with learning disabilities, but most autism. The founder is Matthew Israel, and he wanted a device to send shocks to the individual at any time of the day, um, when they ate, when they showered, even when they slept. It's a remote um, controlled backpack that is triggered by obviously a remote control, and they have to wear this thing like 24-7, knowing at any time any given moment that they could get shocked. Israel promotes um, this torturous act as a behavior modification method and it's mostly for autistic people. JRC is the only place in the country now that utilizes this method even though it has be been debunked um, for being useful. In 2016, following reports that identified JRC practices as torture, FDA banned the use of reversion shocks. Unfortunately, the ban was overturned recently, and that's why we're talking about it today. Um, if I look down, because I have some notes, because my memory sucks. Um, the first time I heard about this, um, it was a few years ago from a YouTuber I watched named Jennifer Mum Jen Jennifer Mumba? Sumba? Something like that. Uh, she's actually autistic and she lived there for seven years, dealt with their torture for seven whole years. Um, she did escape and I recommend you watching her channel because she has some videos on GRC and I'll link it down below. Um, as well as some of the resources that I have used for this video. So one of the many tragic cases was Andre McCollins. And let me tell you, the more in depth that I went into JRC, um, every turn that I took there was some type of death or torture. So keep that in mind if um, you're very sensitive. Anyway, Andre McCollins um, went to trial in 2012. Um, JRC shocked him 31 times after not taking his coat off. His coat. He ended up with electoral burns and other injuries he still has not fully recovered from 16 years later. Now here are some things that they will shock you for. From flapping your hands standing up, screaming and praying for being shocked so they shock you again. It can also burn skin or make some, someone unable to move. Um, JRC was first established in 1971 by obviously Matthew, Matthew Israel, which I just talked about, as the Behavior Research Institute, which stands for BRI. So it started as a different name. Um, during college, Israel had studied behaviorist ideas by B.F. Skinner. I never did look up who that is <laughs> um, because he really wasn't part of the research I was looking for, but it was in there. <clears throat> and then he began um, trying his ideas on children. The first one was three years old. This convinced Israel that he should start a school. So he funded BRI, which stands for Behavior Research Institute. He first um, opened a school in Rhode Island, and then, or er, Rhode Island, 1976, and then he opened another bra branch in California. And this is where it gets trippy. Um, this dude began as a school whose students were mainly autistic. Um, and some had intellectual disabilities, like I mentioned. 
Um, the treatment at the school consisted of many forms of punishment. Punishment. Oh my lord, my words are tripping. Um, including spraying children in the face with water, pinching them, slapping them, subjecting them to painful muscle squeezes, spanking them, forcing them to put hot peppers on their tongue, forcing them to wear a white noise helmet that emitted static. And we all know that a lot of autistic individuals have sensory processing disorder, um, especially if you're familiar with my channel, and noise can be one of them. Um, noise is a noise is a really a thing with me, and it like physically hurts my ears, depending on the noise. Um, <clears throat> the organization Cali still exists, but is under a new name, Tobin World. I talk with my hands. Um, Bree of Cali was revealed to have severely abused students after the abuse of Christopher Hirsch, was who was reported in the media. Christopher Hirsch was 12 years old and had been subjected to severe pinching and the skin on his feet was completely removed. Doctors described his body as not having any part of him that was not covered in bruises. After another student, 14 years old, Danny Asward, died in Brie of Cali while being strapped face down to a bed. The Cali Department of Social Services, which was called DSS back then, compiled a 64-page accusation of the program. The do document consisted over 100 violations of the Bree's license. In 1982, the Bree of Cali facility settled with the state and was banned from using physical aversions within Cali. In 1990, 19-year-old Lil Con uh, Lil Linda Con Corneliusson had perforated stomach ulcer, which was ignored by the staff of Brie, which is really, really ridiculous. As Linda's pain worsened, her expressions of pain began to be treated as behaviors to be punished. She was subjected to 56 physical aversions before an ambulance was finally called. And guess what? She died. They did an investigation in her death conducted by the MA Department of Mental Retardation, and I hope it's on our new name now because that sounds so vulgar. <laughs> um, they reported that the treatment of Linda was inhumane beyond all reason and violated universal standards of human decency. The initial investigation found that there was not enough evidence to link the BRI to Linda's death, but in 1995, the Brie, which now is called, which by this time was called the um, Judge Rotenberg Center, was found by the MA court to have exhibited negligence in Linda's death. And in 1996, or yeah, in 1996, Judge Rotenberg Center moved to Canton, Massachusetts. Shock aversion became a very popular um, form of punishment at that time. And it started in 1988 with the Self-Injurious Behavior System, which was SIBIS, which Israel had purchased. So obviously he's already a twisted man. Um, the device caused a shock of 2.02 milliamps lasting for 0 0.2 seconds. Israel decided he wanted a more powerful device and designed the GED, which stands for Graduated Electronic Decelerator. Um, which can deliver a shock of 15.5 milliamps, lasting up to two seconds. Then he um, he came out with the GED4, which subjects students to stronger shocks of 45.5 milliamps, along with food dep deprivation and mechanical restraint. And this must be where a lot of autistics are talking about ABA, because I didn't hear anything about ABA until my son was in it, but. His is just play therapy. They don't like make him do anything he doesn't want to or force him to do anything. They go like around what he wants and just like stuff that you would also learn in school. So I was very confused. And then I read this and I'm like, huh. No wonder. Of course, that's going to do some damage to the autistic individual. Come on. 
Um, in 2006, revealed that the staff falsely claimed they were licensed psychologist staff, lacked necessary training and experience, and somehow, it's still standing, <laughs> staff was physically abusive, lacked a safe environment, etc. Despite all this, JRC was recertified for using level 3 versions in 2009. So even though they proved that they were abusive, um, lacked a safe in, <laughs> lacked a safe environment, couldn't take care of the residents, and lied that they had freaking um, degrees that they didn't. Through all this, it is still there beyond me. Now, yet if a parent did something like this to their kid, they would go to jail. So why does that not? mean the same thing to medical staff, especially one sketchy people like this. Um, there was another guy that died before Linda's case and they, around the time that they got in trouble for the negligence on her case, they um, were in trouble for the death of the one kid that died before Linda. So, even though they were in trouble for deaths and negligence and all this, I just, I can't put it all together, like, what the fuck? I cannot research this any further because it, it, it literally disgusts me. I'm like an empath, so I felt all the pain and torture and everything while reading this, and it made me physically sick. And it took me like four times to even record this video because it's just, it's so disturbing. We need to get this place shut down and stop the shock. I just, they can do it to kids as young as five years old. Augustus' age. He will be six next month. And I just can't understand why parents would drop their kids off here for them to be tortured. Because obviously it's still a school where students can come and go. But it's also for residents where they live. And at first I'm like, hmm, maybe the parents don't know. But they keep taking them back. And from my understanding, some parents would rather their kids be dead than be autistic. Um, there's been parents that killed their kids, there has been um, parents that abused their kids, even um, parents through Autism Speaks even said that they'd rather their kids dead than be autistic. Um, so it's, it's very disturbing and there needs to be more awareness. I'm glad that more is coming out on it. So maybe it can get shut down. A lot of YouTubers have um, been uploading stuff on it too. And I just, I can't. Um, most of the autistic community who are YouTubers have put up some stuff. Um, Darren from Zumba, or Mamba, I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Actually had some posted before all this. And then after I seen it, it said that it was banned and I was super excited, but then for some reason it got reversed. I am very confused as to why, especially with all the evidence that goes back years and years and years of abuse and negligence and lying staff. Um, apparently this man gets paid a lot to use these medical de torturous devices. Um, there's even some about New York City gave them tons of money too, so it just baffles me how this is okay. Um, I'm going to end the video here. Let me know your thoughts on JRC, and we need to put more out there. Stop the shock. Talk to you later. Bye, guys.